Okay, welcome to another program exam solution tutorial for this year's uh, Comp 1 exam. Obviously, we're looking at the Capture the Sarum code, which hopefully you are all uh, getting to grips with. And this time, we're going to look at the fact there is a slight strangeness in the code that there is a function called getGameType that isn't called. Um, now, it is absolute simplest. This could be just give it a quick call and assign it back to uh, the uh, oh, I forgot the name of the thing simple game variable identifier however it's kind of asking for that weird bit of ASCII to be added to it and also asking for the other validation that's fairly obvious for this to be added to the function as well we could also narrow down the ASCII ranges but crucially this function is just asking for another type of game to be added. Uh, if you're following it on the wiki book it's 1.18 at the moment. So let's have a little look at the code. So this is how the code stands. I have added a couple of comments just for clarity but um, at the moment we've got a simple assignment from the console and then we've got something that is effectively an if statement that says if we've currently got a character that falls within the lowercase letter range then minus 32 which will convert it to uppercase and that's a that's a bit lame really so what we're going to do is uh, change that call we're going to move all that case changing code to within the function and we're going to add a bit of validation a try catch for the type and presence check and I think We'll probably have a look at playing around with the ASCII range selection as well, at least at least um, to get an idea of it. And just make sure that we know how we could add on a, a, a second game type as well. Okay, let's make this function call then. So, oops, what have I done here? Uh, so, let's make the function call, get type of game. Let's clean up that ASCII code. Let's get rid of this because we don't need that either. So you can see straight away this is looking a little bit looking a little bit cleaner. Now we need to go to this uh, get time of game. Let's go to definition there. And I've kind of cheated. I've already pasted um, a couple of things in here because I don't want to see you, you want to see me typing stuff out. So let's just explain what I've done. Hopefully you can see that this is just the ASCII code that we've got, but I've had to change the variable identifier from val uh, from sample game to type of game, which is the local variable for the for the character within this function. I've placed the whole shebang within a try catch, and all of my code where I've got an input and my ASCII conversion, I put within the try. Just a little error message in the catch and you don't have to do this you can do this all with uh, separate boolean statements but just because i'm going to add some other validation in a moment i have put a created a boolean called valid past and i've got a loop that loops until valid past equals true on the valid section of my try catch i've got valid past equals true and on the exception side i've got valid past equals false so effectively this will just keep looping until i've got an uppercase letter being generated i don't actually care at the moment which uppercase letter it is it can be any because the rules of the game at the moment are that if they enter yes a y sorry they will get the sample game, anything else, and they will get um, the normal game. We'll look in a moment about how we could narrow that down. But that's how the rules of the game will work. Uh, if you haven't uh, done this style of validation before, we've got the whole thing in a loop, and you've got then everything inside a try-catch, and then you've got further validation within the, the try bit of the try-catch. You really kind of need to... Uh, to play with that and make sure you can code it okay I've just magicked um, 
an extra piece of validation and this is now where perhaps you get asked to say it's either got to be Y or N, yes or no. So obviously this could be extended to anything you like, but effectively if type of game equals yes or type of game equals no, then that's valid, else it's not valid. So the idea that you can just keep adding further if statements um, that dictate whether it's valid or not. Now clearly you need to be a bit careful that uh, you only want valid to be true if all of your criteria are met. So sometimes it's useful to, to phrase everything in the negative rather than the positive. And I guess I should probably put a, another uh, dialogue message there to explain to the user while they're being asked to enter in again. The way that I've done this is really, really, really as simple as possible. Of course, we could have done it with ASCII codes, but as we've got a character anyway, it just seems obvious to try and equate it to an, another literal character. Uh, so now let's add another option. So the only one that I can really think of that's a possibility uh, at the moment is the idea that I've got another type of sample game which is some form of uh, problem, a capture the solemn problem. If you know chess then there's a whole sort of uh, area of the game where basically you get specific problems where there's a kind of theoretically best move and you've got to kind of guess what that is. So let's just do that and we'll call it option P. The nice thing about this is that all I have to do is if option P is, is now a possibility, in terms of validation, I can just go or type of game equals P. We've now added another valid possibility to the type of game options. Clearly, I will have to handle that P elsewhere, particularly in the initialized board. Um, that's where it actually gets next initialized. But in terms of us validating the different types of game, the way that we've structured this particular function now with a, a loop, a try catch, a sort of slightly clunky, I probably wouldn't have bothered with it, if statement to uh, convert to uppercase, I'd probably use the UK function in VB. And then one or more if statements or one if statements with lots of boolean terms to actually narrow down and dictate what are valid or invalid inputs. Um, so hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully you have uh, do you know what's annoying? I've just realized that I referred to the function by the wrong blinking name. Uh, I hope you'll excuse me, that's a typo. I've realised I've done it all the way through the PowerPoint, but uh, obviously it's get type of game, not get game type. Uh, but hopefully you found the content of this useful and that you can now go away and try it. I will be whacking the code or links to uh, my paste bin on the Google Docs document that's at the top of this playlist. So uh, you should be able to check what you're doing against some uh, hopefully correct code.